On today's primetime local news, we hear from Vic Juba Theater as they deal with refunds due to COVID-19. Alberta government announced canceling large events in the province due to COVID-19. Will Lloyd X and the Collector's Show follow suit? Yeah, we have more hand sanitizer stations out. Uh, our event staff will be cleaning more, not more thoroughly, but more um, frequently. And are people concerned about going to gyms? We talked to a local gym owner about the impact of COVID-19 on gym goers. Prime Time Local News, serving the Lakeland and Midwest regions. In response to the coronavirus outbreak, the city of Lloydminster is putting multiple events over the next month on hold, including the DARP stakeholder meeting and the Battle of the Badges. Facilities like the Service Center, uh, Sports Center will remain open for the time being. The city of Lloydminster has been um, looking around to our local health authorities and provincial governments to follow best recommendations that they are giving um, in an effort to do that. The city has followed Alberta Health Services' recent recommendation of um, event cancellations, and uh, we will be following through and uh, suspending some of our events that we are hosting. The city will make sure that uh, our facilities remain safe for our public, and we'll be taking any necessary steps to make sure that they're uh, clean and sanitized. A full list of the suspended events can be found at the city's website. The city will provide another update on Monday. Events involving large gatherings of people are being cancelled all around the world, and this is, has especially affected the theater industry. Our reporter Shelby Clark visits the Vic Juba Theater to find out what their plan of action is. If you've bought tickets for any shows coming up in March, you will be receiving a refund from the Vic Juba Community Theater very soon. We've essentially cancelled every event that we had scheduled here through the end of March and hoping, well, not through the end of March, but close, and hoping that uh, things have got themselves sorted out. But we're also expecting this could be a little bit longer, too. I mean, it could be a month or six weeks before we can have an audience back in the chamber. So This weekend, there was going to be four performances of Lakeland College's Mary Poppins, but it will now be postponed to hopefully in June. As well as the Ukrainian Dancing on the Border Festival, the box office is busy refunding everybody's tickets. I think everybody everybody understands that. Uh, I mean, this is one small inconvenience compared to the greater world and and what's and what's happening there and what people are having to deal with. So I, th I mean, nobody's been people are upset because most a lot of the, a lot of those ticket holders have very sad kids because they don't get to get up and do their thing. Local events will be easier for the theatre to reschedule and they plan to take more caution since they believe this will affect them for about six months to a year. With having a small amount of staff, they hope this situation doesn't last long. Um, shutting down would be, would be a, last, uh, a last choice, but if it came down to the economics of just not being able to pay people, then I guess that's what we would have to do. Purchases of tickets with credit cards will be automatically refunded while people with purchases using debit or cash can call the box office to apply back to a credit card or go to the theater for a full refund. Um, I think it's, it's a great measure to, to, stop, to stop the spread of this virus as, as, as soon as we can. Um, and we're going to do our part to, to, uh, to, to help with that like everyone else is. Due to the coronavirus outbreak, community theaters like this one are now starting to look like this. For primetime local news, I'm Shelby Clark. Due to COVID-19, a lot of measures have been taken to prevent it from spreading further. The Alberta government stated uh, that gatherings of 250 people or more must be canceled. So a few university, uh, universities in Alberta, including the U of A and the University of Calgary, have canceled classes. Here in Lloydminster, Lakeland College has had to cancel a number of events planned. As of yesterday, Lakeland College has postponed all large events, including the info sessions on the Vermilion campus and the ACAC futsal championships. They'll also require all staff and students who have returned from international travel to self-isolate themselves. However, all classes will not be affected. Lakeland, and Lakeland College has made a page of their website with updates and information on how to stay healthy. Visit lakelandcollege.ca slash COVID-19 for more information. Gyms across Canada are gearing up to protect themselves against COVID-19 with a stronger emphasis on cleaning. 
There has been an increase of high-grade cleaning products in the gyms to help sanitize high-contact surfaces like mats, dumbbells, and other high-touching areas to ensure safe, hygienic space for both athletes and staff. We're really taking the precautions for all our athletes to make sure that they stay disinfected and they disinfect all the equipment. Though the pandemic hasn't hit Lloydminster, uh, Drury says other gym owners are on high alert and continue to make sure everyone who visits is in a healthy environment. Community and friends with a few other owners of other uh, gyms here and I know that they're stepping up their game just as much as we are to make sure that you know they're ensuring safety for their athletes and their staff. With the Alberta government announcing the banning of public gatherings, the Lloyd X is one place that hosts many events and sees hundreds of people. Even with the government's announcement, they're still unsure if they will be cancelling any other events. We are monitoring the situation. Our committees are working hard to make decisions uh, in the public safety and the public's health. At this point, uh, no decisions have been confirmed, um, so just keep watch on our website and uh, for press releases and that sort of thing. The collector show is set to kick off tomorrow, and with that, they'll be taking extra precautions to maintain cleanliness. We have more hand sanitizer stations out. Uh, our event staff will be cleaning more, not more thoroughly, but more um, frequently. We'll be wiping down door handles and that sort of thing, um, just to help the spread and keep this public safety. The Lloyd X will be updating throughout the weekend if they'll be canceling other events. The 28th annual Border City Collector Show, of course, will be going ahead this weekend. Many collectors from across the prairies will be displaying their collector's uh, items at the Lloyd X. The show will run Saturday and Sunday from 9 to 3. Antiques, coins and farm toys will be among the items at the show and many exhibitors will be selling items. It gives me a chance to talk to people. I've actually sold stuff and bought stuff here. Uh, somebody comes along and makes you an offer. I'm not supposed to sell anything because I'm just display, but if somebody comes along and offers me $200 for something I paid $10 for, it's kind of hard not to sell it. While there, are, there has been some concerns raised uh, surrounding events with large crowds, the risk of COVID-19 in Lloydminster is still low. The show is expecting smaller crowds. And... Uh, uh, we've had a few cancellations on our uh, displays, but not very many. Tickets are $5 and 15 for families. And now to your weekend weather with our Abby St. John. Thanks, Judy. It's currently minus 17 here, and clouds are starting to roll in. We did have a nice, fairly sunny and clear day. However, it was a little bit cooler than we had uh, experienced uh, earlier this week. Winds coming out of the northwest at 12 kilometers per hour, making it feel closer to minus 25 with that wind chill. Across Alberta, minus 17 also out in Athabasca, minus 15 in Cold Lake and in Whitecourt, minus 16 in Edson and Jasper, minus 18 in Edmonton and Rocky Mountain House, and minus 19 out in Red Deer. And on the Saskatchewan side, minus 13 out in Prince Albert, minus 15 in Meadow Lake, Melfort, Saskatoon, and in North Battleford. Overnight in North Battleford, the temperature will drop to minus 19 winds coming out of the northeast at 13 kilometers per hour and then tomorrow there's a daytime high of minus 12 winds coming out of the east northeast at 17 kilometers per hour and there is a uh, 30% chance of 30 to 60% chance of some uh, periods of snow starting in late morning, ending in mid afternoon. In Cold Lake overnight, the temperature will drop to minus 22. Winds coming out of the northeast at 9 kilometers per hour, picking up to 15 kilometers per hour coming in from that same direction uh, with a daytime high of minus 12. Here in Lloydminster overnight, the temperature will drop to minus 20. Winds coming out of the northeast at 13 kilometers per hour. There's a 30% chance of periods of snow starting this evening and then there's a daytime high of minus 14 tomorrow winds coming out of the uh, northeast at 15 kilometers per hour and a 60 percent chance of snow uh, periods of snow throughout the day about two centimeters is predicted to fall with that wind chill it'll feel closer to 
feel closer to minus 24 with a low of minus 20. And then on Sunday, it'll be a high of minus 12, which will feel closer to minus 23 and a low of minus 21. And then on Monday, things warm back up again uh, with a nice clear sunny day, a high of minus 6, which will feel closer to minus 17 with that wind chill and a low of minus 16. That is a look at your three day forecast. We'll have more news coming up after the break. Welcome back. Five barley and wheat commissions across the prairies have spoken up against the new seed variety use agreement pilot project and how its royalties will be distributed. Our Eric Bay has more on the group's concerns. The new SVUA pilot project includes a new royalty agreement imposed on producers, something that none of the barley or wheat commissions were consulted about. Really the problem we have with it with the Alberta Wheat Commission is that we're not consulted in that process, in that pilot program. And we have a real concern of how much producer money has gone into uh, the development of uh, public varieties. With producers putting money into the development of new seed varieties, the Alberta Wheat Commission is concerned about how the new royalties would come back into the public breeding system. So that money's been spent 10 years ago for new varieties that are coming forward and it's producer money that are they're paid through checkoffs and a combination with government funding and so we really want to be part of that process in uh, in the you know any kind of royalty. The AWC wants to see the royalties work for farmers and create sustainable future programs. Farmers are already contributing so the, any uh, additional royalty charge needs to come back into the public breeding program to support the future of breeding in Canada. Producers might be left further on the outside with Agri-Food Canada no longer continuing to consult on royalties. Agri-Food Canada was in the consultation pro process uh, during the last year and they indicated in la just last week in uh, Vancouver at a meeting in the Grains Round Table that uh, that consultation program will, will not be continued. So that's a concern. I mean, that process was set up to uh, consult farmers and, and government and industry. The five commissions want assurance that any royalties collected are put back into the wheat variety breeding program. Eric Bay, Primetime Local News. And now here are your agricultural prices for today. part of less than 5% of Canadian auto body shops at Lloydminster's only locations with certified collision care recognition at City Centre Auto Body. A local swimmer is looking to take her talents to the Tokyo 2020 Olympics. Our Montana Getty has more. Seventeen-year-old Vena Anderson is set to compete in the Olympic trials in two weeks. She is still taking in the emotion she has for such a big time in her life. Once you start competing at provincials and then Western nationals and then nationals, and it's kind of like, whoa, wait a minute. And then like I qualified for the Olympic trials, and it's just kind of like, this is amazing. Like this is like it's like it's just almost unbelievable. It's almost a dream you have, but you don't really know you have it. Although Anderson has been swimming since the age of six, she still works on improving herself. So I've been working the whole like season, kind of really working on sprinting and speed, because I qualified in the 50 freestyle. So we've been kind of training for that event a little bit more. With the coronavirus and cancellations of sporting events around the world, she may not be able to compete until a later date. I mean, it kind of like kind of sucks that if it if it's canceled, just because I've been working for like two years to try and ju just compete there. But her dream doesn't end at the 2020 Olympics. My ultimate goal is 2024 Olympics. So, I mean, it kind of sucks that I wouldn't be able to get the experience of it. But in the end, there's nothing I can do about it. 
Vena continues to play other sports, coach swimming, and maintain a 90% average in school. It's tough sometimes, for sure, but you just got to make your priorities what they are, and school always comes first for me, so I make sure that my grades are what they need to be, and, and then you just kind of go from there. If the Olympic trials don't get postponed, Vena will be heading to Toronto on March 30th. Montana Getty, Primetime Local Sports. With COVID-19 running rampant across the globe, uh, sporting events are being canceled or rescheduled for a later date. There's no exception for Lloyd Minster as Lakeland College is starting to feel the effects of the virus. The women's futsal, futsal uh, team only plays one weekend out of the year. They don't have a regular season or any scheduled games until their championships, which were supposed to be happening this weekend. Due to COVID-19, the, the wrestlers' only chance of playing is now postponed until a later date. As like many other uh, sporting events, that date is still undetermined. And now for another look at your weekend weather with our Abby St. John. Thanks, Judy. Taking a look at our satellite radar, uh, not as much snow activity as we've seen over the past couple of days. Uh, lighter cloud coverage as well, which is nice. Uh, just a little bit outside the Edmonton area, Vegreville, up in Cold Lake. Uh, here in Lloydminster, there's about a 30% chance of periods of snowfall starting this evening. And then a much larger chance that we will see some about two centimeters of snowfall fall tomorrow. On the Saskatchewan side, not as much snow activity. Down in North Battleford, there is uh, about a 60% chance of some snowfall tomorrow. About a 30% chance of some periods of snow starting tonight as well. But definitely uh, look at, watch out for tomorrow as there is a higher chance of snowfall then. Minus 17 here in Lloydminster currently. Minus 14 in Macklin and up in Pierceland. Uh, minus 15 in North Battleford and Meadow Lake. Minus 16 in Maidstone and St. Walberg and in Green Lake. And minus 18 up in Isla Cross. And on the Alberta side, minus 16 in Provost and in Marwain and up in Lac La Biche. Minus 15 in Cold Lake bon and Bonneville. And minus 18 in St. Paul, Vermilion, Vegreville and in Edmonton. And tomorrow, minus 14 is the daytime high here in Lloydminster, as well as out in Provost, Wainwright, Vermilion, uh, and in Marwain. Minus 15 in Vegreville, Edmonton, and St. Paul, and minus 13 in Bonneville and Lacklebish, minus 12 in Cold Lake. On the Saskatchewan side, minus 13 up in Isle Cross, as well as in St. Walberg and Maidstone and down in Macklin. Uh, minus 12 in Green Lake, Pearsland, Meadow Lake, and out in North Battleford. Overnight across the region, Provost and Murnum could be experiencing some snowfall overnight as well. Uh, heavier cloud coverage in Unity and Wainwright. And then colder temperatures uh, over the majority of the region. Minus 22 in Meadow Lake. Minus 23 in Isla Cross. Minus 21 in Pearson, Bonneville and Paradise Hill. Uh, minus 19 in Unity and Provost. And minus 20 in Murnum and Wainwright for your overnight temperatures. And then nationally across Canada, minus 22 up in Yellowknife where they're uh, fairly clear skies. Uh, minus 11 out in Regina with a mix of sun and cloud. Uh, plus 7 out in Vancouver. Fairly overcast skies. Plus 4 in Quebec City. Uh, plus 3 out in Toronto where they have fairly clear skies. Uh, plus 3 also out in Halifax where they're experiencing some rainfall. And then over the next 7 days a high of minus 14 and a low of minus 24 tomorrow and a heavy chance of snowfall about two centimeters will fall and then on Sunday a high of minus 12 and a low of minus 21 and then things warm back up again on Monday with a nice clear sunny sunny day with a high of minus 6 and a low of minus 16 minus 6 is the high on Tuesday as well with a low of minus 15 and that same clear sunny day uh, the same clear sunny day on Wednesday as well with a high of minus 3 and a low of minus 13. Mix of sun and cloud on Thursday with a high of minus 8 and a low of minus 19. Minus 5 is the high on Friday with a low of minus 18 and another mix of sun and cloud. That is a look at your 7 day forecast. We'll have more news than the question of the day coming up after the break. Uh, of course, COVID-19 has a lot of events being canceled, uh, and now Lloyd X and others are might be following suit. Uh, what are your thoughts? Was the question? I really think it's an important thing in in terms of like 
you know, keeping it at bay so that we're not like, you know, contaminating everybody else. If you're sick, stay home. The events being canceled or being postponed, great thing. And I think there's also an event happening with uh, at the Lloyd X, of course, yeah. right? But the collectors show that's happening, but who knows, yeah, right? Yeah, looking at some of her comments, you know, some people are upset thinking that it's an overreaction yeah. or a control by the government. And then other people are saying say, better safe than sorry and, you know, taking those extra precautions. I am one of those people who, yeah, looked at it and thought, like all the sports yeah. uh, shutting down. I was like, okay, that's a little bit extreme, but really thinking about it, this will stop the spread. If you have less people in a room gathered yeah. together, it's, you know, less of a chance that this will spread. And, you know, maybe it won't spread. Mm -hmm. Who knows? Mm -hmm. But you're eliminating that, you know, uh, chance of it spreading even further because that's what we want. We of want course. it to stop spreading. Yeah. And I think the fact that we had that 60-year-old man in Saskatchewan that uh, we found out this afternoon that had um, the virus. And then in Battleford, uh, a woman was also is waiting to kind of get the, the stuff, I think, the testing and stuff like that. I think she, they've said that she has some, you know, yeah. COVID or whatever, or the virus. I hope not, but that's besides the points. Uh, let's switch gears. We're, we have pets. Thanks for uh, sending your pet pics for a chance to win a gift card from the Pet Pad. And of course, we'll be announcing the winner at the end of the show. We want to see your pets. Send photos of your pet and their name to our Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram to have them featured on Pet of the Day. Your name will be entered into a weekly draw for a gift certificate from the Pet Pad. Today I'm joined here with Christian Travers and Jesse Mann, the creators of My Why, which is an organization that asks difficult questions, seeks understanding, and strives for meaningful change. And we've had a lot of guests come in through My Why to come and talk about their stories um, and their uh, journeys. So I thought it was perfect to have the creators of uh, the organization come in and talk just a little bit about the history behind it, why it's important, and the t uh, the sub different subjects that you guys deal with and the different stories that you hear. So thank you so much for coming in. Yeah, um, thanks for having us. Of yes, course. Thank you. Can we just start with the history behind my why and why it was created? Well, it's I mean it's a long story, but I will try and <laughs> encapsulize it in a short form. But um, my why why is is everything right? Um, we. We don't know, when we're going through difficult things, we don't know how we're going to get through them sometimes. But if you know your why, you can you know, go forth and, and, and it gets easier. So that I think is what my why is. Um, Jesse and I are, are friends. Uh, we met at a women's conference. I was speaking at a women's conference. She was the MC, and instantly we connected. And we've uh, both been s through some challenging health stuff and, and challenging circumstances and so we wanted to create a platform for people to tell their stories. Yeah, people often ask us to tell our story but we, I think that a lot of our why and how we get through different things with as much grit and grace as we possibly can is because of um, listening to stories of other people in the community. Um, in Lloyd Minster, there's so many people that have gone through such tough stuff and mm -hmm. are using it as fuel to, you know, to be better and to help the community. So we were actually sitting in a hospital bed together yeah, and just thought, what do we really want to do and, and realize we want to tell stories and tell other people's stories. And so how, um, how do other people get involved uh, for telling their stories or what do they have to do to get um, to share their story with you guys? Well, they can reach out to us um, at any time. Um, usually it's just kind of come to us. Like right. um, usually we just kind of get these stories of resilience and we kind of follow that. Um, but yeah, at, at any time people can reach out to us at all. For the most part, it has been quite organic and mm -hmm. um, people have reached out. We have um, been so lucky to have a partnership with the Lloydminster Region Health Foundation and through Project Sunrise and uh, the Lloydminster Mental Health Initiative and different things like that have, have kind of reached out and, mm -hmm. and uh, trusted us to put together some stories of, like I said, amazing people from the community. 
And uh, yeah, we're actually working with the uh, uh, Rural Health Initiative um, in Alberta now mm -hmm. too. And we just signed that contract and are very excited to start. Yeah, so. Now, uh, last May, we kind of ran some panel series on mothers who have gone through postpartum depression or have maybe lost their child uh, due to miscarriage. So th that's one kind of subject that we have seen that you guys have um, shared. What are other subjects or what are other types of stories have you come across and have you listened to through My Why? You did such a good intro, Abby. And um, like in short, we just say that we're educational storytellers. So mm -hmm. if there's a story to tell that can educate, um, it often definitely gets our interest for sure, but mental health addictions is something that you know we've had family members face and have gone through some of that stuff too, and it's it's near and dear to us. So, mental health addictions and um, any story of resilience. Yeah. Um, like uh, my background is is nursing. Like I'm an RN. Jesse is a teacher. So you combine those factors, and we want to educate with health or with education. Um, that's I think is our our passion. Yeah. That's what we're doing. And tough stuff. Yeah. Now, there's a huge stigma around mental health, and it has, you know, lowered, and we are taking a little bit more seriously mm -hmm. than in the past, but it's still, there's still those barriers that are still put up around mental health because you can't physically see it, mm -hmm. um, you know, only the person itself can feel it. So what are you guys hoping My Why kind of helps by other people sharing their s stories about uh, the struggles that they've gone through um, in hopes of, you know, other people hearing it? I gotta say, I think that Lloyd Minster's leading the charge. I mean, I'm Lloyd Proud, born and raised, and I really do think, and, and maybe it's just because I'm here, but we are crushing it in the community, and, and the we is, you know, health foundations and different organizations, um, the city, so many people are, are trying to reduce the stigma, and so many people have, have started that, and we just wanted to jump in and, and do some of our part. Um, we're very passionate about working with residents in recovery and um, at the end of the day there's so many different community outlets then and resources that people can go to and so we just want people to know where they are and feel as though that there's somebody in the community that will hear them and support them mm -hmm. and um, one um, of just the most amazing things that that we had happen and it was kind of through PTLN is um, we had a, a woman reach out that just you know said I, I'm a different person and I'm going to seek support because of Tyler's story and I'm going to I'm going to change my life because of Tyler's story and um, you know sought help and is just doing awesome and amazing mm -hmm. things and to hear those type of stories come from you know Tyler's and the Geordies and the women that you guys met um, and shared with the maternal uh, mental health initiative mm -hmm. we did that's what it's all about yeah and I think when people s say their story and when uh, when their people are brave enough to you know, seek help and, and say, this is what I'm struggling with. Um, that's the ultimate show of, of vulnerability and that's the ultimate show of, of, you know, being brave. And then people will, you know, take that and run with it and say, okay, me too. And that ends the stigma. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, thank uh, thank you so much for coming in and sharing this because My Why has been such an amazing organization. Just the people that I've met and I was able to talk to. Um, when we come back, we will be talking about a podcast that they are launching in uh, just a week on the 11th, and we're going to get more details on that next. All right. Thanks. Furniture set and design supplied by Furniture Gallery and Furniture House, downtown Lloydminster. I'm back here with Christian and uh, Jesse with My Why, and we talked a little bit before about what My Why is and the history behind it. And uh, right now we're going to be talking about a podcast that they're starting that will be launching on March 11th. Uh, very exciting. Every mm -hmm. podcast have become so much more popular these days and mm -hmm. everyone seems to love them just finding which one you know suits them and there's right. many many different ones on different subjects. So can you tell me a little bit about what the My Why podcast will I guess hear uh, sound like opposed to look like but what can people expect uh, to hear from it? Well, we have had an opportunity to tell stories, as we mentioned, and uh, we have been so lucky to partner and, and have Kim Caprell with NARA Studios on board. And um, putting out videos is, is something so near and dear to us. And we just want to reach as many people as we possibly can. And, and part of creating the videos that we've done in the past was sitting down with families and just sharing and having a conversation. 
And so uh, podcasting, when you said that, I was like, holy, we have a podcast. We have a podcast. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, so this just gives us another outlet to be able to share those stories. It's, it's very important for us right now to make sure that they are uncut and kind of ad free as we get started to just sit down with great, amazing people who inspire us and yeah. inspire others and tell their story. And so um, going back on, you know, hearing other people's stories, uh, what kind of guests will you have on? Or can you tell me, just hint at, uh, give us a little preview on the first episode on if you have any guests or what you're planning on doing in the future with that. So we have an exciting guest to launch our, our podcast. We have Jess Tatu, which is the um, owner of Just For You Day Spas and the most amazing philanthropist. Um, she is like coined, uh, well, she is the most powerful woman in Canada. She's one of the most powerful women in Canada. She won that award. And, and I can't even believe that we have her on our first podcast. And she's the most amazing, resilient woman. Um, we, are, we are highlighting people that have resiliency and people that have amazing stories. Um, we had a guest from Residence in Recovery. Um, and he was so insightful and so... Um, just wonderful speaking to him. Um, the, Going on five months clean, so yep. we'll give a shout out to, yep. to him for doing that and keeping up the great work mm -hmm. there. And, and obviously residents in recovery will shoulder tap them for um, some stories. Yes, and uh, Candace Willits, um, a, a local makeup artist who's killing it. Um, we've had some really good, uh, really good interviews so far. So I'm very, we're very excited. Yeah. And why did you guys decide to start a podcast um, about and share these stories on that platform? I don't even remember really. I think you mentioned that I just called you one day and was like, we should podcast. But and I said, yeah, sure. <laughs> in my, in my <laughs> head, Kristen started it. So that's we're each other's brains. Uh, yeah. Like we we will say yes to anything that um, we think is important and anything that can share stories. And so if Jesse suggests something, I'm like, OK, let's do it. Vice so, versa. Yeah. yeah, exactly. So that's why we're great together. Um, so and I think podcasts are the way to go i think that's a very smart idea yeah, yeah. we hope so. so we hope so we like to dive into things that challenge us and um that was even just the audio piece we're so lucky sean newman's got such a great podcast at Lloyd and he came sat mm -hmm. down with us uh, we've had many people give us kind of their ear kim again caparel sit down and, and help us with the audio so getting through some of that was a lot of fun for us too to make sure and and it was such she a was she <laughs> She was I'm amazing a bit of a nerd at, that. at heart. I'm not. We want it to sound crystal clear. We want to be able to tell stories in an authentic way. And podcasting just gives us another means to do that. And, and it's been a lot of uh, fun to welcome people into, we call it the pod pad, to welcome people into mm. the, the my white crib kind of and, and sit down with them. And every time, you know, they walk out and we just look at each other, we're like, is this real life that we get the opportunity to be trusted with telling people stories? Mm -hmm. It really is. I mean, get goosebumps talking mm -hmm. about it. It's one of it's just like the ultimate following your passion. And it started, like I said, it started um, from a, from a hospital bed and just saying like, OK, what can we do now? And we have both had quite severe health scares and we just wanted to live our life the best to our or the best of our ability. And so this is kind of a way to highlight other people and give people a platform. Yeah. One thing Kristen said to me a long time ago, um, and she said so many wise things to me, was um, we need to live more for our legacies and less for mm -hmm. our resumes. And at different times, you know, our resumes have been very important to us, you know, getting things done, getting it on paper and being like, yes, I've accomplished that. But this is an opportunity for us to tell stories and, and build kind of more of that legacy piece and not mm -hmm. so much a resume. And we want to spend time with great people, and this gives us the outlet to do that. And uh, now, so it la launches March 11th. Where can people go to listen to it? Uh, well, you can visit our website, myyrevolution.com, and it'll be um, there'll be a link there through Captivate. It will also be on Spotify and iTunes and um, your favorite, uh, working hard to get it on all of your favorite podcast streaming services. There's so many, and again, mm -hmm. that's been a learning curve. Um, yeah, so just getting it on as many different platforms as we can. So check out our social media, and we're so lucky many of our, our first presenters will be promoting it to um, Candace will it's just for your day spas and that kind of thing as well so all right well thank you so much for coming in and sharing this amazing uh, uh, organization and then it's so incredible that you guys are starting a podcast now and I think that'll just spread <laughs> spread your guys's uh, message out just a little bit further so thank, thank you. you guys so much for thank having us and all the support much. you always give us for our guests it's weird being on the chair we like being behind but yes we do thank you so thank much you for so helping much. us of course
Hey, it's Justin Marshall, Hot 1013 and Boom 95.3 radio stations around the Lakeland. And here's what's happening in the area. We're coming up here at Eastbourne Hall on Saturday. It's a fundraiser for Brian Thacker. Samantha Cardwell joins me now. She is the organizer. What's happening? So on Saturday, we are hosting the Thacker Family Fundraiser Dance. We have a shuttle picking up and dropping off from St. Paul and Glendon. We are also including such items as raffle items, silent auction, 50-50s. We have a cash bar, photo booth taking pictures by donation. And we also have the band Gypsy Renegades from Cold Lake coming out who donated their time to be here. Amazing. So much stuff. You can get it all at facebook.com slash hot 1013. Samantha, why are you doing this? Well, you know what? Every family needs a little bit of help sometimes. And this time it just happens to be Brian and his family. And Brian has cancer? Yes, Brian does have cancer and has been fighting for about a year now. And how's the GoFundMe doing? It's going well. We're almost to our goal. And what's the goal? We are hoping to raise about $15,000 and we're at about eleven right now. That's amazing. And this should put you past the, the, the goal here on Saturday. I definitely hope so. All right. Well, thank you so much for joining me. Thank you so much for having me. And if you have an event you would like to feature on What's Happening, shoot an email. Jay Marshall at Stingray.com. Taking a look at your seven-day forecast, a high of minus 14 and a low of minus 20 for tomorrow. 60% chance of snow with two centimeters falling. High of minus 12 on Sunday and then things warm back up again. High of minus 6 on Monday and Tuesday. Minus 3 on Wednesday. Minus 8 on Thursday and minus 5 back on Friday to wrap up your seven-day forecast. Yes. I love it. It's the pep cake. The pep of the week. <laughs> and Bruno, our wrapped up little friend, is our lucky winner this week. Brooke, I'll be in contact with you on Monday for details on when and where you can pick up your pet pad gift card. And again, thank you to everyone who continues to submit. I love seeing all of your pets because I think every pet is just so adorable, so adorable as I say and I love looking at them yeah and so. I love Bruno the fact that he was bundled up yes. and all like cute and all like that. and kind of looking over like yes <laughs> why are why are you looking at me that is awesome <laughs> I'm glad that we got a chance to see some more pics of course yes. keep sending them we love them and we're gonna continue to look at them and, and talk about them of course